Hello again. I've probably mentioned before that I subscribe to the New Scientist. Um, and I dare say I've also moaned that it's not the magazine that it once was. Much of the content these days is driven by ideology rather than science. And when ideology gets muddled up with science, it seldom ends well. One remembers the Nazis who rejected relativity as Jewish science and thought that if you believed E equals MC squared that you were a race traitor to the Aryan people. Unfortunately, something very similar is now happening in Britain and the United States. And just as we now laugh at the idea of uh, things like na the Nazi Deutsche Physik, uh, that's to say German physics, which was ideologically pure and in accordance with the tenets of National Socialism, so too will future generations find it amusing that we allowed nutty ideas like critical race theory to infect our own science. Here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Okay. I hope we can all see this interesting article. Note the title, Prejudged Prescriptions. We are told that relying on race and ethnicity when interpreting medical test results can harm patients. It must stop, say Lyle Liverpool and Jennifer Tsai. The use of the word prejudged is good because, of course, it reminds us of prejudice which is the idea, uh, it brings up sub subliminally, we think about prejudice when we read that word prejudged. Look too at the illustration. We can see a black woman and a white one with an x-ray showing them to be identical beneath the skin in accordance with the thoroughly modern and up-to-date ideology which asserts that race is no more than uh, social convention with no biological basis. The gist of the article, which was written by a black woman and a Chinese one, is that doctors in Britain follow guidelines by the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, which advise doctors to take race into consideration when prescribing certain drugs. For example, the guidelines say that doctors should prescribe drugs known as ACE inhibitors to people under the age of 55 unless they are of black African or African Caribbean family origin. This article objects to prescribing drugs while bearing in mind ethnicity and I quote Given that race and ethnicity are poorly defined social constructs with no biological basis. And right there you have the nature of the problem. Ideology is being used to try and shape scientific practice. Declaring that race is a social construct can sometimes be an anti-racist rallying cry. At others, an article of faith, or even perhaps a political belief. It is not, alas, a scientific statement of fact. Far from it. Perhaps looking at a few specific instances will make this clearer. Take Chinese people, for instance, and others of East Asian origin, Koreans and so on. A third of people of East Asian heritage are deficient in the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase, and it will cause them facial flushing and sickness. In the United States, 90% of people of this heritage are also lactose intolerant and have difficulty digesting milk. The consequent lack of calcium ingested from dairy products means that Chinese people are at increased risk of developing osteoporosis. In the description to this video, I give clinical references for these statements. Lack of the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase is vanishingly rare in white people, but very common in those of Chinese heritage. A doctor treating a Chinese person for alcoholism would have to bear this in mind. 
Similarly, the lack of calcium would ingested in the diet is an important thing to know when dealing with patients of East Asian heritage. The lack of a particular enzyme in a third of the population, a third of a particular population, is not a social construct, but a medical fact. Here's another medical fact. African American men have on average higher levels of the hormone testosterone in their blood, about 15% higher. Again, I give references to, for this in the description to this video. Whether this is an environmental thing or an inherent factor, it is nevertheless a fact. It's associated with the fact that African American men have the highest rates of prostate cancer in the whole world. Any doctor treating a black American man for prostate cancer really would need to know about this. The only people likely to be adversely affected if hospitals and doctors start pretending that race is a social construct and deliberately ignoring biological differences such as ones I've mentioned are those belonging to ethnic minorities. It is their diagnosis and treatment which will suffer. It's quite true, as the authors of this piece in New Scientist say, that race is poorly defined, but that hardly matters. Most of us, whether doctors or laymen, find no difficulty in spotting whether somebody is of African heritage or comes from East Asia, despite what is said here at the end of the piece, which is that a doctor's glancing assumption about a person's race or ethnicity doesn't offer meaningful biological information that can guide medical decisions. Racism clearly drives health inequities in many countries and this must be addressed, but perpetrating harmful and unscientific ideas about biological differences between races in medical guidance isn't the solution. Of course, there's many people of mixed heritage and it's difficult to tell uh, what their ancestry is. But I have to say I've never yet confused an African or Caribbean with a Chinaman. I have more to say about this uh, in the course of the next day or two. But for now I will simply remark that the mention of health inequities is interesting. I wonder if anybody would care to guess which ethnic group in Britain has the lowest life expectancy and which the highest. Health inequities indeed. As I say, there's a lot more to say on this subject, so I'm going to be doing a, another video about it shortly.